Uh, thank you again, Rainier. Um, and thanks again for having me. Uh, so to, to start, or before I really get started, um, I did want to invite everyone to enter for a chance to win an Apple HomePod Mini. Uh, my employer, Jay Frog, is a platinum member of the Rust Foundation and would really like to give you a chance to enter and win uh, the, the HomePod Mini. Um, you can enter with uh, the QR code or this uh, jfrog.co link at the bottom, and I believe Rainier is going to put a banner uh, on the video as well. Um, a winner will be selected within three business days and will be contacted uh, via email. Um, so uh, I, I wish everyone the best of luck with uh, the Apple HomePod Mini. Those are, those are nice. Um, so about me, uh, my name is Elliot Frisch. Uh, at JFrog, our core competency is helping developers leap forward. I've been a developer for over 20 years and writing Rust code for a little over a year now. Um, I have some links here to uh, various information about me, as well as the code given in this talk, uh, which can be found at the, the, the link at the bottom there to my GitHub. Um, so uh, we'll start with the development environment. Um, I've been using VS Code with the Rust language server and a number of plugins. Uh, this is fully documented in the README, the, the GitHub. Um, but uh, we can go over it real quick. There's some Rust language server, uh, tab nine, uh, uh, fonts and turning on ligatures and things of that nature for a pleasant environment. And then in my terminal, I use oh my Z shell. And then of course I, I walk through how um, I've set everything up within this uh, talk, including uh, you know setting up a web server, various crates that I'm demoing. Um, so to very, very start, uh, we're going to start with a very, very simple JSON. In fact, the simplest JSON I could even think of, which is a very simple uh, version, string uh, with a numerical value in it. Um, so we're going to we're going to parse this version string. Um, so we've got we've got a version. We've got some numerical value in it. And um, we're going to use the JSON parse crate. And of course, we need to match because that could return an error uh, on the handle, or it could be an OK. And if it's an OK, then we'll actually get a JSON value. Um, and uh, we can then display whether we, we got that value or not. And I'm going to actually uh, switch from here. All right, so here's the exact same code, but now in uh, VS Code so that we can just run it. So if we execute this code, you'll see that it, it parses out whatever version you put in here. And it doesn't matter if it's a string or not, because um, we are using uh, a parse function and a JSON uh, value. And so that's an enum type that can re represent multiple things. Um, and we are actually parsing it uh, as a F32. So as long as it's an F32, we'll, we'll get that back out. Um, and if it's not, then of course, we will get an error um, that it could not parse the empty string. So that is how that code functions. And we can then move on to a more sophisticated version um, and actually introduce anyhow, where instead of, let's go back to this first version. So in this first version where we're parsing it, there's quite a bit of, of logic that has to go into the, to the matching conditions to determine whether it was a string, whether it was a number, whether it was a short, because again, this JSON value is an enumerated type. And when I was first starting out, this explicit matching seemed like it was excessively verbose. And um, so I spent a lot of time working on how I could reduce that. And the answer turned out to be anyhow, where um, we can, instead of, matching on all of the error conditions, simply use anyhow to wrap them. And this will, instead of requiring us to match all of the various possible JSON values, we can simply say, attempt to parse it as a floating point, as a F32, a float 32. And uh, if that fails, then wrap the whole thing in the anyhow error and otherwise uh, return an OK. Um, so this significantly simplifies uh, actually parsing our JSON. So if we go into the V2 and we change this to value and run it. 
Um, it, of course, successfully parses it. And if we move the version and run it again, we'll get the same can't parse an empty string. Um, so, so far, so good. Uh, anyhow allowed us to eliminate a whole lot of boilerplate from version one. Um, so that was excellent. So now what can we do? Well, what if we actually went and got some JSON using a uh, request blocking call? So this is going to use the HTTP request library. It's going to make a get to a URL. It's going to get back the text of that, and then it's going to attempt to parse it. Um, and the URL it happens to be this, uh, this string here. And so what I'm going to do, I can just start up a web server and I have a version JSON in there. And now, instead of uh, parsing a simple static string, we're going to actually get that JSON and parse it directly. Um, it's being a little slow, sorry. There we go. So we got uh, a value of 3.15. Yeah. Elliot, uh, let me quickly sure. interrupt you. I'm very sorry. Uh, we have a question from the audience. If you could increase the font size still a little bit um, if that would be possible, that would be very nice. Ah, very good. Thank you very much. And let me just move this back over. I hope that's clearer for everyone. And just to, to remind everyone, this code is fully available in GitHub. It's also uh, on those the slides that have already been shared out. So um, yeah, I apologize if you if you still can't read it. Um, I'll, I'll do my best to, to, to uh, expand on it. Um, so, uh, if we, if we now go back over to, uh, edit that JSON in the, um, V3, uh, JSON folder. So we'll just bump the version here to something like 8.15. Why not? Um, and now run it again. We'll see, we get 8.15. So it, it is real code. It's actually making the the HTTP request, it's getting back uh, JSON and it's parsing it. So, so far so good. Well, what else could we do? Well, what if we made a call to uh, an actual API out there? Uh, this is something called uh, Zipopotamus and um, it will return kind of like we were looking at before where we get a, a floating point value as a string and then have to parse it. This actually returns floating point values as strings and we have to parse them. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll start with a default zip code. We'll make the request. Uh, we'll get a JSON response back. We'll match on that. If it was good, we'll try and parse it. So let's look at what that parse would do. We'll, um, look for places. We'll get some, uh, geolocations out of it. Uh, we could actually use this uh, geo utils location crate if we wanted to, but I don't see the need. Instead, I'm just going to build a, a Google map string based on the latitude and longitude based off of the zip code that we retrieve so that we can then uh, see it on a Google map. So that's a simple, simple use case. Um, and uh, so we can go into the v4 folder and run it, and I will give it uh, the zip code of where I actually live, which is, like I said, Atlanta, a uh, suburb technically, but Atlanta. And we'll let it run. Make that big so you guys can see it again. And sure enough, we get back a latitude and longitude and a Google link. And if we open it, there's uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Well, technically Norcross, Georgia, but there it is. Um, and if we simply run the same thing, like I said, it has a, a default. So if we run it with the default, we get a very unusual location for a US zip code. 
This is the federated Micronesian island of Yap, which is in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Um, but it's got lovely beaches. So you can look at those. It's very nice. Um, so we can move on uh, to the last version that I've implemented here. And um, Uh, we could have several different URLs, and we could make all of these calls in parallel and uh, iterate through them on success. Uh, so that's that's kind of what this this code's doing. It's just kind of a a reach, but it's making three different API calls in parallel and getting the results back and dumping them. Um, so that was just kind of a stretch of what else could it do? Um, and obviously, if we were to execute this, um, you'll see that it just prints the URLs, the statuses, and the text results pretty quickly. Um, I uh, will now go back to uh, presenting the actual slides. So we can go through these. Um, so again, uh, now I'm going to really stop and ask if there are any questions. Uh